Hi and welcome back to another video and today we will talk again about the RTX 4060 Ti because that was definitely a tough and hard topic of the last week. Not only for the reviewers, I mean look at what Jay did with his video, he even took it down because he thought it was not enough what he delivered for his community and then I mean for the community itself looking at what you are getting by Nvidia and then Nvidia, I mean obviously they definitely also didn't have an easy week launching this product, seeing all the reviews. I was generally fine with my review, but you also let me know some things in the comments which I missed. And I want to clean up some of the parts because there are things, especially when it comes to the PCIe lanes, and I was honestly surprised that no other reviewer was talking about that this card has only 8 PCI Express lanes. And there was something I missed, I definitely want to cover again in today's video. It's not going to be so much about the 8GB of memory, because I think that got enough coverage, but power and PCI Express lanes is going to be also a problem. I mean, I pointed out in the previous video that this card is only running with 8 lanes PCIe 4.0, and I did some coverage about it, but not too much, I just showed that it's not held back by this if you use a PCIe 4.0 system. So if it would run with 16 lanes, it would not be faster than what you have on the table right now. But I actually missed the entire PCIe 3.0 systems and that's what we're going to cover. And I also didn't have a 3060 Ti. And I read a lot of comments about this. Why did I not include a 3060 Ti? The, the reason is pretty simple. I didn't have one and I'm not going to buy a lot of cards for or any cards usually for just a graphics card review because that would be considered financial mistake because then you spend more on the review than what you're actually earning which would not make a lot of sense especially on the long term but for this video I bought a 3060 Ti because it's going to be quite interesting and important for the comparison and especially because I treat the 4060 Ti because I mean Nvidia is treating this as a mid-range card you can argue about that, especially with the price point, but Nvidia treats this as a mid-range card. So it could be a successor or an upgrade option for you if you are currently running maybe a GTX 1060 or maybe a GTX 970 or like an RTX 2060. The problem though could be that you are running an older maybe AM4 system with an older AMD CPU with B450 chipset or for example this one, which is an Intel platform, is actually not that old, but this could be a 10900K. In reality, it's a 10850K, which is almost the same CPU. It's also a 10 core Intel CPU, still quite recent and still quite powerful and definitely enough to power like a 4080 or something like that. But the problem is that it's only running with PCIe 3.0. And going back to that, this card only has eight lanes. It will be limited because it's the same as running PCIe 4.0 with only four lanes. And yeah, that's going to be interesting. So we will just jump into some benchmarks. As usual, we are starting with the synthetic test 3D Mark times by Extreme GG1. And usually you're losing a lot less performance here. And the 4060 Ti is still about 6% faster than the 3060 Ti. The 3 Mark bench also has a PCIe bandwidth test, which is quite interesting to check at which bandwidth and also PCIe speed your card is running. And both 3060 Ti and 4060 Ti are running in the 3.0 system here. And as you can see, the 4060 Ti is only performing about half as good as the 3060 Ti when it comes to the pure bandwidth. In Remnant from the Ashes, things are getting interesting because as you can see, there is practically no difference between these cards they're both performing exactly the same. But at the same time, I also want to highlight that the 4060 Ti consumes about 40% less power than the 3060 Ti. Switching to a much more recent title, Plague 1080p Ultra, the 4060 Ti beats the 3060 Ti slightly, even though it's bandwidth limited. And again, the card consumes 30% less power than the 3060 Ti. In Battlefield 1440p, it's getting quite interesting because, as you can see, the 4060 Ti actually loses against the 3060 Ti. I mean, it's only by a tiny margin, which is almost measurement error, but it's losing on average. But again, the power consumption of the 4060 Ti is much lower. In Cyberpunk, the 4060 Ti will beat the 3060 Ti again and will consume 75 watt less power. 
I had a quick chat with NVIDIA Germany about this yesterday and they straight pointed out that of course the 4060 Ti has DLSS 3 and will still beat the 3060 Ti of course. And here we have it with DLSS 3 and obviously the jump is impressive from about 100 to 150 FPS and also the power consumption is going to be slightly lower using DLSS. I did a quick poll on my German channel yesterday about how the community thinks of DLSS, especially how to handle it in like benchmark charts, at least that was my intention. And from the result, 39% of the users are always using DLSS if the card and the game supports it. Whereas on the other hand, 20% of the people, even if the card and the game supports it, do not use it, which is quite interesting. And then there is the question, how do we reviewer treat DLSS? Do we just, or same for FSR obviously, but do we natively include it just in the benchmarks and pretend like this is the native rendering? Which I think is not correct because I actually agree with Hardware Unboxed and Hardware Unboxed said that they treat it as a frame smoothing tool. I mean, you can get smoother FPS, but at the same time, you could theoretically also get like artifacts and like a negative impact on the image quality. So yeah, that's always a big debate, especially with Nvidia. We have this, I think every single review, they would love us to just always use DLSS active and just throw it into the same chart. And I kind of don't agree with that, but just let me know what you think. But now going back to the entire PCI Express thing. And just to sum it up, I mean, both cards will perform exactly the same on a PCIe 3.0 system because this card will be bandwidth limited. And then we have this card just going by German prices right now. This is listed for about 430 to 450 euro here in Germany. And the 3060 Ti is listed for about 100 to 110 euro less. Now you could argue that even though both cards perform identical, you should maybe go for the 4060 Ti because it consumes much less power, on average about 30 to 40% less. And obviously over time you will save money, just depending on how much you pay for your electricity bill. And is that actually worth it? I took a quick look at it. So I did some quick math and estimates. We are now looking at the Cyberpunk example where the 4060 Ti on average consumed 88 watt less than the 3060 Ti. And just two comparisons, we have Germany with an average current cost of about 31 cent per kilowatt hour. And in the US we have about 13 cent per kilowatt hour. So if you have a daily gaming session of four hours per day, you will save 40 euro in Germany per year. In the US, you would save about $16 per year if you game for four hours a day cyberpunk. So on average, going over three years, you would save 120 euro in Germany and in the US about $50. So basically it depends where you live. If you live in Germany, it won't make a difference. If you buy the 4060 Ti, which is much more expensive, but it's much more efficient, you will save money over time because it consumes less power. We're just talking about the PCIe 3.0 system here right now, because that's what I use for a comparison. It won't matter if you buy the 3060 Ti or the 4060 Ti after three years. I mean, you saved some money on the power consumption, but this card is just cheaper. They perform exactly the same on the system, so nice. So a few years later, same performance, same price. Yeah, no benefit. When you're living in the US, it's actually more interesting because you guys from the US, you pay less for your current. And then it's getting quite interesting because at least in this example calculated over three years, this card is much more expensive than this one. That means because your current prices are lower, it would be much smarter to go for the 3060 Ti because it's cheaper and even though it consumes 30 to 40% more power, it will still be cheaper and you will have exactly the same performance on a PCIe 3.0 system. How nice is that? When you have a card that is a few years younger. Not so sure. One thing I also want to highlight is that I would love to see more focus on the power consumption in general, also by my YouTube colleagues. 
You know, Steve, I love your work and I mean, you're doing an amazing job at all the analysis and showing so many games and impacts on resolutions and everything. But I would love to see more analysis of the power consumption also during the gaming benchmarks and not only Fermark, for example, because you're showing like 160 something watt in Fermark and I see 120 to 145 watt in games, which is quite a bit different. And Linus also showed only about 30 seconds power consumption in his video, so only a tiny focus. Hardware Unboxed, much better focus, about two games that show more of the real power consumption, which I think is just important for the gamer. And I would just, I would just like to see more of that. In the end, the card is killed by the price. Still, same as all the other conclusions, the card is just way too expensive and the 16 gigabyte model in my eyes is actually going to be worse because you're going to spend $100 more for additional memory, but the base performance will be the same because if you play games that are not memory limited, you will have the same performance as this one and you paid more. You just have the backup that if you play other games that need more memory, you're not held back by the memory limit. But overall, the price performance ratio is going to be terrible. For example, if I look at the market in Germany, I can get a used RTX 3080 for about 500 euro. So it's going to be cheaper than the 4060 Ti 16GB. And it's going to be much faster, about 30-40%. to 40%. How does that even make sense? I don't get it. And what also won't make sense is if you are planning on upgrading a PCIe 3.0 system with this card. Because in some conditions, it might actually be much better to just get a 3060 Ti, because it's not bandwidth limited. And you might actually lose performance on this one, even though it's going to be more efficient, but it's going to be just way too expensive. Yeah, overall, I think the good thing is that the market will regulate this. It's the same, I mean, we had issues with this three years ago where the demand was so high that we saw insane GPU prices. But I think the same thing effect will hit the 4060 Ti because I, if I look at the sales in Germany, they're pretty bad. And if nobody buys the card, Nvidia will have to drop the prices. That's probably what's going to happen. Yeah, I just wanted to add this to my video, especially the 3.0 upgrade thing is going to be, yeah, something you have to really think about depending what kind of system you're running. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye.